Okay, my friends, we are now going to start adding some color in our project, but before we go on to our final project today, which you've drawn your image for, we are going to do a practice piece first with our uh, markers. So today you want to make sure when you are using these markers that you are using either a regular point sharp, sharpie, none of the super fines, or a Crayola marker. Okay, we don't want to use the Mr. Sketch because they don't have a nice little point at the bottom of them. Um, they have a flat slanted tip and those aren't going to work well for the points that we're making in our pointillism piece. So the first thing that you need to know before you begin your project is we are going to do analogous colors, okay, to make our optical illusion. So normally when we're doing a painting, we talked about with a paintbrush, you would blend your colors um, with the paint by putting the colors on top of each other and moving your brush around. But with the artist we learned about, instead of doing that, he placed dots very close to each other to create an illusion from far away that they were blended together. So we're still gonna be using colors like we were if we were going to blend with a paintbrush, but instead of actually blending them, we're going to be doing dots. So analogous colors are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. And the reason why I like to teach them is because they always work really well when you blend them together. So basically what they are is they are neighbors, okay? So if I was to pick the color blue, and that was the color I started with, I then have to choose a color that's next to that color on the color wheel. So that could either be violet or green, okay? So while you're doing this today, you're gonna pick the color you wanna use to start with, all right? Again, let's do it another example. Let's say I pick orange. After I finish with that first color, I'm then gonna find a color that's next to it to use as my second color. So if I'm using orange, I can either do red or yellow, okay? So in my example, I have this heart here, and you're all gonna get one of these when you're done with your drawing and sketching out your design. And this heart is just basically two hearts that overlap each other. And in each section of that, you're going to do um, one color scheme. So inside of this little heart here, I picked the color blue. And I am gonna give you friends a heads up that um, right now we don't have a whole ton of blues. So don't get too stuck on doing too much in blue. So I'm gonna use this, put the cap on the back so it doesn't get lost. And gently, not, I don't wanna push hard because that's gonna ruin the tip. Gently, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna just dot some dots. And when I'm dotting these dots, I wanna leave enough space so that the dots are not touching each other. So as I'm going in with this blue, I'm trying to avoid touching the dots, okay? I'm leaving enough space so that they don't touch each other because I'm gonna go in those empty spaces with my second color. Dots are touching and that's okay, that's gonna happen. I'm gonna go in and I want about 50% of that space filled in with my first color. And what it looks like about 50% of it is, I'm then gonna go in with my second. So I started with blue, so I can either use purple or green. So I'm gonna use this green color. Sometimes you'll have greens that have a little bit of mixture of blues in them. It doesn't matter, you can still count that as a green. So now I'm gently gonna go in and I am going to push in those areas that I have white space left over. which is not what I want to do. Remember, the artist we learned about, he did not go in, George Seurat, he did not go in and blend his colors on top of each other. He placed them next to each other. Okay, so I went in and I did the green, but I'm looking really closely at it and I still have some leftover white spots, which we want to avoid. So I'm gonna go in, maybe back in with um, my blue and maybe in those leftover spots I can dot a couple more blues because I would like to have more blue showing in this. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Notice I do have a couple spots that have a little bit of white showing through, but it's not a lot. We don't really want a whole ton of white space left over. You should pretty much be dotting on top of your dots or near them with a little white space. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna pick two more colors to do in this space. So let's say maybe I wanna do some warm. So maybe I'm gonna start with some orange. So I'm gonna find an orange marker and I'm gonna do again dots but leave spaces between those dots so they don't touch.
Okay, so once I've done that, I sometimes like to go in and see if there's anywhere that maybe the spaces look too empty and redot a couple more. Right now I'm going to go in, pick a color that's next to orange. So I have orange, I could either do red or yellow. I am going to do red. So that's looking pretty good. I don't see a whole ton of white spaces. Okay. Um, the background you don't need to worry about. You can go ahead in your project then. You're going to find the first shape that you um, can in your work. And you're going to fill that space up with your first color scheme.